Hello and welcome to another uh, Python Pro tutorial. In today's tutorial, we're going to talk about for loops. Um, previous tutorial, we looked at while loops, uh, for loops. Let's uh, loop through iterable um, objects, which would be like a string, a list, a uh, tuple, and uh, could be objects that we create. So it allows us to go through each, let's say, a list for example each object in a list and do something with it so we're going to take a look at that um, let's take a look at a very basic for loop in uh, Python and what it would look like uh, say we're just gonna loop through and print out colors or something all right so it would be four all right so that's how we initiate the for loop and then we're gonna have uh, it could people call it target or um, I like to refer to it as a temporary variable. So I'm going to say for color, and I tend to use a singular name here, and I'll show you why shortly. For color in, and what I mean when I say singular here, if it was if we had a list which I didn't create, I would call my list colors. All right. Anyhow, for color in, and we're just going to create a list here of colors. We'll do red blue green and yellow just like that close out our list and then we need a colon at the end of the header for the for loop hit return I'm going to tab in and now we're just going to print the color all right and when we run this it's just going to loop through the uh, iterable list and it will print red blue green and yellow simple right um but for loops have a, a a very useful um they're very useful in python that's what i'm trying to get at. i am dragging all day today uh anyway we're going to create another one we'll create a list this time we'll do one two three four five six seven eight and nine close out our list and now we'll do, uh, we're going to add these numbers together. So we'll do a sum is equal to zero. Then we'll do four num in nums. All right. And then our colon. And then tab in. And then we'll say sum is equal to sum plus num. All right. So what we want to do here is we're going to loop through and say we go to the one. The one's going to be added to sum, which is currently zero, and then it's going to be assigned. Now, sum's going to be assigned to it. All right. And then um, as it goes through, we'll keep doing the same thing. So num will be added to sum, and then sum is assigned to that new number. All right. So we hit return, return one more time, and now we can uh, just call sum. I don't feel like writing print. Sum is 45, all right? So if you add all these numbers together, you get 45. Oh, uh, let's think of another one. Uh, we could also iterate through strings. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier. So we'll do a state, and we'll do a Mississippi. Spell that right, I think. All right, and then for letter and state, oops, S-T-E state and i'm going to keep it on the same line because we can do that too after the colon and i'll just do print uh letter all right yep there we go um so now we just get iterate through each character in the string and we print it out so m-i-s-s-i-s-s-i-p-p-i -S 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 boom mississippi pretty cool um how about working with some tuples let me clear my screen. We'll do A, and we're going to assign that to a list of tuples. So in there, we'll have one, two, three. Oops, close out our tuple, and then a comma, and then we'll do um, another tuple of four, five, and six. Turn out, uh, close out that tuple, and we'll do one more as seven, eight, and nine. Close out that tuple and then close out our list and now we do four and then inside parentheses we're going to say b c and d and close out those parentheses 
and in a we're going to do something so b c and d are just temporary variables that hold a position so b will represent one c will represent two d will represent three and then the next for loop b will represent four c will represent five and d will represent six so then we'll just come down here we'll tab in and we'll print uh, b c and d hit return hit return there we go one two three four five six seven eight nine all right that's pretty cool. Um, we could also write it like this, I guess. Before nums in a uh, tab in, we could do a comma b comma c is equal to nums. So it's assigned. And then we could do print a, b, and c. Hit return, hit return, and there you go. Same thing. All right. So you can do it either way. Uh, this way is probably easier since you don't have to write as much. And as you guys know, I'm pretty lazy. Alrighty, how about with dictionaries? Um, let's do a D for dictionary, and then we'll make get our curly braces, and then we'll do a one colon one comma two close out a string colon two comma three colon three close out a curly brace then we'll do four and then in parentheses we'll do key comma value and close out our parentheses in D and then we'll just do a uh, print key comma value and boom Oop. too many to unpack what the hell oh I know what I did wrong uh, go back up just hit up and go to the four key and value, the four header, and do uh, dot items. So we need that to get our items, which are our values. Hit uh, return, tab, and now we'll do print key value. There we go. Two and two, three and three, one and one. Uh, now there's an easier way to write that which I was think I was going for in the first place and then I kind of went the other way. So for key in D and then tab in we'll do print key comma key, D square brackets key like this and we'll get the same result. Two, three, and one. All right. And remember they're not going to print in order because dictionaries have no uh, sequence, not in order. All right, so we learned all that fun stuff. Let's uh, build a program. I'm on a roll with these lately. Uh, open up your text editor. This is one I did yesterday. We'll close that one out. Anyhow, um, create a new file. We'll call it forloop.py. So save it as forloop.py. And what we're going to do with this while my computer decides this. There we go. Forloop.py. There we go. Save to my desktop. I'm going to create one more file and we're going to save that as search.txt. Um, Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, take a search word from a user and then we're going to iterate through the file here and look for that word. So basically we're building just a little search engine. Um, Go ahead and grab some content from somewhere. I'm gonna grab some somewhere. Put in here. Um, yeah, close. I'll just go to Master Code Online and grab one of our posts. The first one I see. Sorry, I should have been a little bit more prepared, but it's a Friday. And I am not moving very fast. While that's loading, because it's taking freaking forever, uh, let's get and start writing our code. All right, search is going to be our user's input. So we'll do a search input. And then in here we're going to say import, import, input your search term. All right, just like that. Next thing I want to do is I want to count how many times a word was found. So we'll get a variable found. Set that 
assign that to the value zero because we haven't found anything yet. All right, my page finally came up. Um, Jesus. All right, I'm just gonna grab the explanation of Pro, Python Pro. Just copy some of the content in there. Go into my search text and paste that crap in there. Uh, there we go. I got some text. Now you guys can use whatever text you like. I threw just whatever in there. I'll save that. All right. Anyhow, go back into our uh, for loop.py. And now we're going to open that file. So we say with open in there is going to be a string. We're going to say search dot text and then comma. And then we're going to read. So R will read it as data. So with open search dot text. So we're going to open the search dot text file and then we're going to read it and we're going to save it in the temporary variable of data. And then we're going to say since we're working on for loops today, we're going to say for line in data. So what it's going to do is read each line by line. We're going to say if search, and I'm going to say case fold on search because um, the user might use capitals and whatnot, and uh, you know it might not work out as prop as we expect it so we'll case fold it so we'll, it will have no case information connected to it so we'll say in if search case fold in or search in line dot case fold we'll take that down too um, we're gonna do something we're gonna say found plus equals one so it's gonna count how many times the word was found and I'm gonna come back under the for loop and print found Alrighty. Uh, that should work, I think. I don't know. We'll find out. Uh, click, get out of our uh, get out of our um, interpreter, and now we'll just run that. I'm in my desktop, so Python three uh, for loop dot py. Hit return and enter search term. I'm gonna say Python because that's probably in there, and it was found two times. There we go. Basically, we just build a, a, a little program that searches files. Uh, that's pretty cool, right? It's pretty simple. Um, you could do other things like... Uh, uh, we could say print line. Let's see what that gives us. I think that will give us the line it's actually found on. So, Python... Oh, that printed them all. Yep. Nah, don't do that. Um, I'll think about that. I was actually thinking about uh, in our Learn Python by Example tutorial is actually building like some kind of SEO program that will search and see if your uh, doc your website is SEO friendly. Maybe we'll do that today. Depends how lazy I am. All right, anyhow, if you guys uh, have any questions, let me know. Don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe. And don't forget to share it. Help me out a little bit. I'll see you in the next tutorial.